Awesome. Well, we're we're gathering the get together for in a couple of different ways this this morning. It's um it celebrates um celebrate Sunday for GMC, but it's also part of the EMMC, the gathering, the EMMC conference. And so there's uh, multiple churches gathering this morning. There's and we welcome you if you're joining us online, if you're streaming to different churches in the conference. And so just to gather in this way is really special. So why don't we, why don't we stand? Um, just take some time to greet people around you, get to know somebody. And uh, if you're ever having trouble hearing in this side, just move closer to the middle. We invite you to do that. All right, so a couple more things. Um, first of all, like, like some kids are already gathering here. If anybody wants to come to, for worship, they're obviously just welcome to do that. And uh, so for song lyrics, they're on your phone this morning. Go to gmchurch.ca. And right at the top, you'll see um, it says, Join us, Wink Third Parkland Main Stage. And then it says, Click here for more info. And that opens up another page that has um, some information, and it says click here for, if, as you scroll down, click here for worship lyrics and sermon notes. And that opens another page that has all the lyrics for this morning and the sermon notes. All right. So I'll just give you a moment to open that, and then we'll, then we'll pray, and let's go. Well, Father, we're here to worship you. We're here to honor your name, to celebrate you. So we join together and we want to lift you high. We want to spend this time with you. God, we know that you're always among us and we ask that you continue that this morning. You would move here. But we look to honor you, to lift you high, to worship the living God. To worship the living God in the name of Jesus. Silences the enemy. The praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We see your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are. We claim your victory.
kind of a new song, but we decided to put it in here because the theme of the conference this weekend was the great exchange. Just responding to what, what God has done, responding to who He is, and just seeing, seeing there's a couple of different aspects, but one of them is just simply seeing yes to Him, exchange of what He's done, and then seeing yes to Him. So God, we want to do that this morning. We choose to, to acknowledge who You are, Your greatness, acknowledge what You've done, and then to just respond to you and to respond to you in worship and respond to you in asking what you've what you've asking of us as we say yes to you so let's just sing this simple melody again where you go where you go i will go i belong to you alone letting of my selfishness send me Lord send me Lord send us God come move in our churches God
majesty before my heart I let it take my breath away A million angels fall Face down on the floor All to echo To all of you watching online, blessings on you. It's pretty amazing for us as GMC to come together one service, right? Woohoo! Great. Yeah, you may be seated. I Me and my wife, we were talking on the way here. We were thinking about the privilege we have to do this with freedom, to be outside in the bowl, and we call it the bowl here, and to worship the Lord and to magnify His name. And that's the call of the church, right? It's to lift up the name of the Lord. And so again, welcome you here. I'd like to welcome you here, all those on the, on the sides, behind the trees, and maybe behind the hill. Hallelujah. Very good. So um, just to let you know that this morning, there's more than just, well, not just a service. Uh, we're here to focus on the Lord and, and connect with Him, receive from Him. But at the same time, we've got things that will be uh, happening after uh, the service. So I invite Suzanne to come forward. Woohoo! Well, good morning. I'm a little nervous. This is a lot of people. I only I stand up here when it's empty. <laughs> You know, this has been an amazing week. Um, God has sustained and been really good to us. And we've seen lots of people come and go in the church this week that we've never seen before, and that was really cool. I want to acknowledge this morning um, the magnitude of people it takes to run a thing like this. Today alone, we have about 100 people that are going to be, be involved. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I can't even name you all. Um, and then in the week prior, in the last few days, because of those who've been involved in, in uh, the MMC gathering, I'd say probably at least another hundred people that have made that work in the last number of weeks, months. And I'm going to shout out to two people just because they work behind the scenes so hard. And uh, this started happening in November already, last November. <laughs> and I'm going to say thank you to Sharon Webb and thank you for, to Adelheid Hildebrandt. They have worked and worked and worked and worked behind the scenes for me. And it's been a real blessing. So everything you see is, just, is a lot of people doing things together. And that's just, it's 
a servant heart, and that's something that we at GMC really, really value, is a servant heart to serve beyond and to see a need and go for it. So blessings on all of those today. Um, just want to, uh, that's my welcome. <laughs> um, today we're going to have lunch. So welcome to our home. We want you to stay for lunch. We have lunch happening at the Mech, so it's a nice gentle walk over there to get your juices rolling. The Mech is open, which is the Meridian Exhibition Center, so we are eat, you can eat inside. There's room, not enough tables for sure for everyone, so you can bring your lawn chairs inside. That there's tons of picnic tables all the way along in the trees. We intentionally put them in the trees on the other side of where all the kids' activities are going to be so that you can sit in the shade and go get your lunch and go sit out in the shade if you like. Um, so you're invited to do both. Uh, lunch will be running from 12 to 2, but we invite you to keep coming, you know, just so it, it, we can finish and wrap it up. Like, don't wait till 2 o'clock to come. So just, you know, there's a bit of going to be a bit of a lineup, but that's the way that we're going to run. Activities are going to start from 12.30 to 3.30. So we've got archery tag. If you are 15 years or older, there's gonna, we've got two sets of archery tags starting at 12.30. Josue Laney is going to be there, and he's going to help you set up. And you're, I don't know what's all involved there yet, but we'll figure it out once we get there. And then all the way going till the Mac building on that side, as you go out there, you're probably seeing them go up right now already, are... Um, uh, the bouncy castles and the inflatables and the slides. There's going to be two choo-choo trains going. So that's going to be from 12.30 to 3.30. So please stick around and enjoy that. Um, and then just for the volunteers that will be serving this afternoon, we do have a table. We want you guys to get on over to the MAC, get your lunch, get her done, because you're going to be working all afternoon, and we want you to make way for the volunteers today. <laughs> So they know they are supposed to go to the table. There's a volunteer table right as you get into the Mac. It's got a colorful rainbow, but just table cloth kind of thing, and it's marked for you. So please go there right away. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much all the news. Um, just so you know, I do, I'm holding a debit card here in my hand. If you are missing an Access Credit Union debit card, come see me sometime. I'll be around all over the place. Um, and so now I'd just like to take a moment to pray. We want to pray for the giving. This morning we're giving to the general offering. And uh, so the ushers will come around. They will continue to move. They do have envelopes and pens if you want. And uh, so there, there are these little gray square baskets that are going to be moving around. So just be patient. It might take a while. But, and, and if you don't see it coming and you'd like to give, just uh, put up your hand or try and make yourself known to. There. We've got about 12 ushers wandering around here. And they will get her done. So let's take a moment to pray and just thank God for his amazing gifts to us. Father, I just thank you this morning. You have blessed us with so much beyond right. what we can understand. Yes, Lord, you're so good. God, you've given us life beyond today. Hmm. And what we have in front of us that we can hold is just momentary. But God, we want to bless you. We want to honor you with our giving this morning. We want to honor you in all the ways that we can. So with our giving this morning, God, be blessed, be honored. We thank you, we love you, and we just want to glorify your name today. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. And uh, your heart for, uh, for all this and all the staff and all the volunteers, like it was said. Um, at this point here, I, I don't know where Lynn is, or uh, the executive director of the EMMC. Where's Lynn? Come on, Lynn. Come on up. Come on down. Hey. Well, just, uh, I, uh, yeah, come on, yeah. Just want to bless you too. Like uh, I know, you've been faithful for many years, serving the Lord, serving the conference. So I know that's probably going to be done in, at another uh, level or on another platform. But we just want to celebrate your obedience and and your willingness to place yourself before the Lord and to say, "Use me, God." So blessings on you, Len. Awesome. Hey, thanks, buddy. I just wanted to. Uh, is this mic good? Thanks, Claude. Um, I just wanted to thank the GMC church, the GMC staff, and the volunteers. Um, 
the stuff that Suzanne already said, the amount of volunteers and stuff like that that have been involved in uh, taking care of us, right? Um, Jonathan already mentioned before, we've got a number of our EMMC churches that have come together into this church family. Uh, some of them are going to be watching online. Some of them have shut down their churches to come here. Um, and it is just awesome. As, as Claude said, um, yeah, I'm the executive director for the EMMC. And for the past four days, your staff and volunteers have been hosting our family of churches. Um, we've had board and council meetings happening this week. We had our gathering happening on Friday and Saturday. And uh, yeah, we basically took over the church for gathering 2023. So we've had times of worship together. Uh, we've had times of prayer together. Uh, we've had celebrations of hearing of God's work within our churches and within our ministries. And um, it has just been good. We've had times of fellowship together. All this done well because you have hosted us well. Um, I've had so many comments from people who came up to me and just saying how much they appreciated the GMC staff and volunteers, uh, how available they were, and hopefully you as volunteers and staff have heard the same thing too. So I'm going to do something which is kind of scary. I'm going to try and mention a few names. I'm not going to catch everybody because, I mean, Suzanne just said there's been hundreds. But I'm going to start out with Suzanne. Suzanne has been involved with uh, looking after the facilities, doing what she does for you, but then she's also adopted us, um, making sure that we were taken care of. So Suzanne, thank you, and thank you to all of your volunteers. Um, I want to shout out to Chuck. There's the man. The, the guy is like calm like a duck, but underneath you know that he is waddling like crazy. Um, I, waddling. Oh, shoot. Sorry, buddy. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so it goes. Um, but he has been, you know, overseeing the cameras, the tech. Uh, we had a number of workshops that were happening yesterday and managed to get that all done so that we have a resource like that for people to go and view online afterwards. So that's awesome. Uh, Jonathan for leading us in worship and Jonathan and Julie for doing a workshop together yesterday of, of giving a culture of worship to us all. Uh, that has been awesome. John, where's my buddy John? Freezing. I heard, oh, there's, I don't know if you guys have seen any of the videos that him and I got to do together, but who knew a teacher becoming an executive pastor would still have the whoop whoops to be able to do, right? That's pretty cool. Michelin, thank you so much for organizing our child care for yesterday. So many uh, people, kids, get to be part of that, so that's awesome. Um, and one of the things that I often get to do as, I, as we put on these events is observe the networking, observe the relationships that get built between each other. And Claude, it was so awesome to see you and your staff connecting with so many people that were coming here from Belize and Saskatchewan and Alberta and all the different places that we had. Um, often being part of our events right from early in the morning till being one of the last people to leave at night. Uh, and all being done with a genuine smile, evident that they were enjoying themselves. So that was awesome. Um, and Claude, you should come up a little closer to, to me here, because otherwise I have to turn around and do this. Um, I just want to say thank you to you uh, as well. You know, um, I'm probably leaving out some people, but the leadership that you bring to this church um, the mentoring and the connections that you do within our other churches and within the region and stuff like that. It's just awesome and we so appreciate it. Um, you and this church play a valuable and unique role within our family of churches and I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you for rolling out the red carpet to us. Um, during this week we had keynote speakers like Blaine Duick, I think he's down over here. David Friesen back there, they were our keynotes on Friday and Saturday, and this morning we get the awesome privilege of being able to hear you. Uh, so this is good. So, yeah. So I just wanted to say on behalf of the board and the council, and especially my extra tired, overworked home office staff, yeah. thank you so much for everything that you guys have done to host us, and we look forward to this celebration Sunday and many more that we can have together. Amen. So thanks a lot. God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks. Bless us. Bless you. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on. Are you ready? Yeah.
Yeah, I would ask you to stand. We'll place ourselves before the Lord. Can you stretch your hand in front of you as a symbol of your openness to what God wants to tell you this morning? This Father, we're so blessed by you. We're in awe of the love that you have for us. We thank you for your provision, your care. And we know one thing is that everyone is known by you, everyone in this bowl, everyone watching. You have such a concern for us, Lord. And, and we just want to tell you that we love you, that we take pleasure in you, and, and that you take pleasure with us in your grace. It's so amazing. What an awesome story. I just pray that you would bless your people, that you would move powerfully by your spirit, that you would speak life to every heart. That you would go beyond my words, Lord, and that you would just sow words that would uh, not return void. A, a word that would challenge us and bring us in the direction where we would be fruitful in your name and for your fame. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, for us GMCers, this year, it makes 25 years that uh, the church is born, so... It was born in 98, and uh, when I look at the journey of Gospel Mission Church, we have to say that we've seen God's faithfulness. It was not always easy, right, for those that were in the journey. It was not always easy, but it's been amazing to see God do this amazing work under this banner called grace. And uh, one of the things I want to do first is to thank all of you that stuck through it and persevered and, and were there to, uh, to support, to be pillars in the church. And those that through the years has been faithful to the cause of the kingdom in GMC. And I just uh, want to let you know that I've got my hat here and I'd like to say hats off, you know. Amazing, amazing to see all of you and all of those that joined in the journey and, and shouldered, so shouldered, if I can say that, the work of God in the church. So blessings on you. But one of the things that I want to share this morning, we're talking about this great exchange. And really this great exchange means a trade-off. There's a trade that needs to happen. And when I look at what God has in store for us, I look at what's ahead. I believe that God has a future for the church. When we look at what's happening around, sometimes we think there's no hope. And sometimes we think that uh, evil or challenges or what we see around will dominate or will uh, prevent the church to move forward. But I believe that Jesus is the head of the church, right? I believe that he has a love for the church. I believe that God has amazing things in store for us, for you. If you're here from another church, I believe that God has something in store for you. And I want you to raise your, hop, your hope high and expect from God. And believe that God is at work. And sometimes what happens, we look with our eyes and we see with our eyes and we forget that we're called to walk by faith. Amen? Yeah, so we, what we want to do is... We want to have this trust in God. And, and, and this morning, I, I'd like to talk about what's... I know there's a lot of ingredients that we want to see in our lives and we want to grow in character. We want to see the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We want to step in our giftings and our callings. And there's a lot of things we want to do. We want to see our business flourish. We want to see our ministry prosper. We want to see things move forward. And I think that's amazing, and we should have all the desire to see things move forward. Amen? But one of the things that is needed for us to, to, to have in our lives when it comes to how do we face the future, how do I face the challenges that my family will go through, because we know that life is not a straight line. We understand there's a lot of curves and a lot of bumps on the road. And I believe there's things that we're called to process and things that we need to adopt in our lives so that we can be fruitful. And I'd like to focus on one thing this morning that is needed in our lives. That if we want to move forward, one thing that we should aim at, and I believe it's our calling. One of the greatest calling that we have as a people, it's to surrender. It's to yield to God. And I believe that if I take a hold of this truth this morning, 
And I realize that my first calling, my first calling as a believer, it's not to serve, it's not to do this or to do that. My primary calling as a believer is to be surrendered to Jesus and to walk a life that focuses on Him and walk a life that we aim to see Him being our Lord and to see Him rule our lives and be in control of our ship. And it's not an easy journey, right? Because there's this battle between in, inside of us of the desire of the flesh and also the move of the Holy Spirit. It says in Luke 19 that the Son of God came to, to, um, to search and serve, uh, to search and save those that were lost. When we think about the gospel, we see this God of the universe that searches for us, seeks out for us like the sheep that's lost where the shepherd seeks for the sheep and places the sheep on his shoulder. When we think about this gospel message of the eternal God searching after us, what an amazing story, right? That God is pursuing me, that as I journey through life, God has a heart of reaching to me and pursuing me. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter in what state you are when it comes to your faith. You might be a, a long-lasting Christian, a faithful Christian, or you might be someone that is walking on the line and you don't know which side to go. Or you might be here this morning and you're living in bondage and you're a slave of different things. I want to let you know that Jesus came and searched after us. Pretty amazing, eh? Before we were, uh, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And not only that he came to search us, he came to rescue us. He came to save us, to bring stability, to place us on the rock, to give us an inheritance, to give us a future and a hope. And it says to those that were lost, and, and that is me and you. What an amazing story, right? When we think about the gospel, when we look at this grand story that we find in the Bible, it's this amazing God that wants to have relationship with us. It's unreal, right? If I just pause here and just process the fact that the God of the universe searched after me, sought me, and not only did that, but came to rescue me and save me, it's amazing, right? So I don't want to lose track of that. I don't want to forget the truth of the gospel is that there's a loving God that searched after me and that went all out for me to know him and to seek, to seek after me and to come and rescue me. So this morning, wherever you are, you need to know this, that if you're below on the other side of the, of the bowl or you're on the sides or you're right sitting in front of me, you have to know this. That God is searching after you. It's like the voice of the ocean that we see when Jesus is referred to in the book of Revelation. It's a wave that's calling my name all the time. Claude, Claude, always calling me, always inviting me. And my prayer is that you would say yes to that truth. So this grand story is this amazing love that God has for us. And not only that he wants to be with us, but he desperately wanted to be with us to the point of coming and inhabiting us. That's how close God wants to be to you. Can you tell your neighbor that God wants to be close to them? God wants to be close to you. You cannot get closer than having him in me. I don't understand that awesome mystery, but I know that he dwells in me. And if you're a believer, you know that he dwells in you. That's how close Father wants to be to you. Can you say unreal? <laughs> right? Unreal. You know the beauty with this morning? I don't have another service breathing in my neck. And so I can be a little longer. Right? So cool. An amazing story of love, right? And, and when it comes to Jesus... He came to set us free and to give life to the fullest. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that Jesus is our yes and amen. That because of Jesus, I'm co-heir with Christ. Because of Jesus, one day I will see the Father. Because one day I will dance on streets that are golden. 
And one day I will see him. And we know that life is just a journey, like it was mentioned before. We know that life is not here, right? And sometimes it's hard to assimilate that, to come to this point, to realize that we're living in a tent, and one time we'll have a glorious habitation. But what I'm going to talk about this morning is that if I want to tap in this awesomeness of who God is and His love and His mercy and His grace and His goodness and His compassion, I need to do a trade-off. And this is where the great exchange is. It's like trading my life for His. And when you look at the cross, there's this, this amazing event that happens at the cross. What we see as, at the cross is the humility and the surrender of Jesus, right? It says in Philippians 2 that he took the form of a man. He became a slave. And he humbled himself to the cross. What we find at the cross is a God Almighty that humbled himself. Listen, I want to have your attention here. He humbled himself. He surrendered his life for us. And when conversion happens is that you or me and me sees our need of Christ, realize that we're sinners and broken, and humbly we approach Christ in the same way. We humble ourselves at the cross with brokenness and ac acknowledging our need and saying, God, I'm lost without you. I need you in my life. And when you have this amazing God that humbles himself to Calvary, and to be called a curse, like it says in the book of Galatians. And we humble ourselves and meet him there. You know what happens? It's a collision. There's this divine exchange that happens. There's a trade-off where my life, where my, my being is transformed. And this is where he comes and he lives in me. And I have a new name. Can you tell your neighbor that you have a new name? Woohoo! I have a new name. Not because of what I've done, not because of my works, and not because of, of who I am, but simply because the Son of God humbled himself to Calvary. And for me to experience this, I've got to do the same. I need to come, humble myself, acknowledge my need. I, we know that the Son of God did not do, didn't need to do that because we know that he was the incarnation of God. But for me to encounter or to see God be real in my life, there's a need for me to surrender. And there's a trade-off, right? There's a meeting at the cross. Uh, can I say it's like brokenness meets brokenness? Can you say that to your neighbor? Brokenness meets brokenness. This is what conversion is. The brokenness of the Son of God meets my brokenness, and this is where he comes alive in my life. So we want to see that, right? And, and, and it starts, Christian life starts with a surrender. Would you agree? Christian life starts with a sen surrender. The surrender of the Son of God and also my surrender. And if you have your Bible, I want you to look at your phone. I'll give you a moment to do that. Get your Bible app out. Take a look at Mark chapter 8. 34. Mark 8, 34. That was the, the theme, the theme verse, verses for uh, this week, this great exchange. And we see this invitation of the Lord for us. It says in verse 34, Mark chapter 8. I'm going to read it from the NIV. You got it? Yeah, you're good. Give you another second for those little like me that takes forever to find things on my phone. Mark chapter 4, verse 34. Chapter 8, verse 34. It says, And he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must, what? He must deny himself. And take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. 
And what good is for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? What Jesus is saying here, what's the point of having all this and living for this world and having that and having this and, and losing your soul? What's the point? Because what's everlasting is the soul. The only people we can bring to heaven, the only thing that we bring to heaven is people. Right? And so Jesus is saying here that if I want to follow him, that if I want to come after him, I need to do three things. The first thing I need to do is I need to deny myself. It's to replace self by God. It's way beyond renouncing something. I like I renounce alcohol. I renounce this. I renounce that. No, it's not about renouncing something. It's about giving your life. It's about surrendering your life. It's more than just saying, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this or that and, and then I'll be fine. No, what Jesus is looking for is for you to be surrendered. And that's the calling that I have in my life. I say, well, Pastor Claude, what's your calling? Is to be a pastor? Yes and no. My calling, my primary calling as a believer is to be surrendered to Christ. That's why I live. And I believe that if I'm surrendered to Christ, God will open doors because it's not going to be me. It's going to be Him that lives in me and through me. So it's so essential for us to understand this truth that if we are followers of Jesus, what is imperative is for me to realize that I'm called to surrender and to deny myself. If you look at this text in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, NIV, from the NIV. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I'm not talking here about self-rejection or self-hatred, but I'm talking about surrendering your life to Jesus. The question I have for you, when's the last time you said, Jesus, here I am? When's the last time you said, God, everything that is in me is yours? Everything that is in my hands belongs to you. I think it's important for us to come at that crossroad and to realize that my primary call is to be surrendered to him. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. In this life, I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son of God. How do I live? By faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The foundation of all this is the love of God that invites me and that showed his immense love by Calvary. But here it talks that I've been crucified with Christ. When you met Jesus at Calvary, when you saw him humble himself, show this love that is undeserving, this amazing, everlasting love, you responded with brokenness and you said, yes, Jesus, I say yes to you. What happened is that he came and inhabited you by the Spirit. And so what you want to see is you want to see God move you and you don't want to stop there. Did you know that God's desire was not just to inhabit us, but also to move through us? Can someone say amen? Amen. Right? So it doesn't just stop at conversion. Surrender doesn't just stop when you gave your life to Jesus, when you received a new name, but it's a way of life. To live a life surrendered is a way of life. It took me a little while to understand that as a believer. That what I am called to focus on is to be surrendered to Christ. And here it says that we've been crucified with Christ. That we are made right with God. But we're called to live by faith in the Son of God. To live by faith means to live a life where you trust, rely, where you're surrendered. So you see, that's the journey that we're on. We're on this journey of denying ourselves, giving room to God in our lives. It's to say, God, I want to be your dwelling place, but I want more. I want to see you active. I want to see you work through my life. Did you know dying to self is the key for what God has in store? I, I think about Abraham, right, and Sarah in the Bible. What an amazing story of the, of the man of faith, uh, 
and this lady that were pioneers for the Israelites. And God gave them the promise that they would have children, numerous children as uh, the grain of sand on the ocean, or on, on, on the beach, or as many as the stars. And did you know that God waited for them to be physically dead? Not dead, but dead, right? Not able anymore. So they looked at each other and so said, we, can we can't have any kids anymore. And God says, now I can. Right? Now I can. It's amazing that when we self-deny ourselves and realize that we can't, and we make God a solution, and we call upon God, and we say, God, I can't do it. I need you in my life. Come, arise in me. Holy Spirit, arise in me. Take control. And this is where they became pregnant after they were not able. That's funny, right? It's a sense of humor that we find in Scripture, but that talks about the calling that we have to, to self-deny ourselves and give ourselves to the cross. And we know, and I'll talk about that in a moment, that when we see that, we see God intervene and work supernaturally. Like, I remember talking with Lynn about a year ago. I was in this journey. We were at the end of COVID-ish. And I was talking, Lord, I was looking at my own life, I was, Lord, am I willing to carry the cross or am I searching for a crown? When I look at the text here, it doesn't say, pick up your crown. It says, pick up your cross. And, and the Bible says that one day there's going to be a crown. And in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, it says, well, it, it refers to Paul as saying that we will receive a crown of righteousness. So what I'm called to do first is to deny myself. And secondly, it's to take my cross and follow him. And we see in the Bible the place for the crowns. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, I just said it. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4, it talks about the crown of glory. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 10, we see that 24 elders fall down at the feet of Jesus, and they throw their crowns at his feet saying, you, you are the God. And, and so whatever the crowns we will have, I, I believe what we're going to do, we're going to throw them at, at Jesus' feet. But the quest and the calling of me and you, it's not about the crowns, but it's about the cross. I believe in the Western world we've built a convenient conversion and a convenient Christianity where it's all about me. Where we sing this song, it's all about me, that you should do things my way, you know. And we get caught in our knees and we get caught on what the, what the gospel can do for us. And it's so true that there's so much that was done for us. But if I want to see the fullness of what God has done for us, I need to realize that my way of life should be a life that is surrendered and to take up my cross. And when you talk about the Jews, when Jesus said that to the Jews, they knew what it meant to carry the cross. They saw it a hundred, hundred of times. See guilty criminals carrying half a cross through the town and be crucified. So when Jesus said, pick up your cross, they didn't say, yay. They didn't say, woohoo, all right, let's pick, let's pick up our cross. They knew what it meant. And Jesus was also talking here about willing to die for him. But Luke talks about carrying your cross daily. So it's not about dying every day, right? But it's to be willing to die for the cause. But it's understanding that we are called to die daily. And that's the calling I believe that we have. It's to live a life of surrender. And some, sometimes we hear people say, well, you know, I carry my cross. It's, I got a lot of challenges in life. It's not about that cross that Jesus refers to, he refers about carrying your cross daily as living a life of surrender. You know, I, I remember hearing a, a sermon. I was a young pastor, and it was an amazing message, and, and the speaker was saying, I remember when I died, the day that I died. I remember the hour when I died to self. And I was saying, wow, I want to do that too. And so I remember going in my prayer closet and say, God, I'm dying today. I'm dead today. And I realized it didn't work because the next day I'm still 
struggling with the desires of the flesh. I didn't realize that dying to self, it's a walk and a journey that every morning when I get up, I'm called to say, God, I don't want to live for me. I don't want to live for my own desires, for my own pleasure. I want to be surrendered to you. And when I do that and do that over again and over again, there's a transformation where the Holy Spirit takes control. Less of me and more of you. Can you say that to your neighbor? Less of me and more of God. Less of me and more of God. So we want to see that in our lives. You know, what I want to do today is I'm just sharing you my heart on what needs to happen in our lives and realize that's our calling. My calling and your calling, it's to surrender. Like Paul called himself a slave of Christ. It's more than a title. It's a way of life where he carried his cross daily and he chose to do the will of God daily. Say, God, I don't want, in my marriage, it's not about me. In my workplace, it's not about me. In the church, it's not about me. In the community, it's not about me. It's about you. It's not about my rights. It's not about what I deserve. It's about you, Lord. And this is why we can live our lives on the gospel based on living like we have a crown or that we might take our cross and follow him. But the beauty, listen, the beauty of taking your cross and following, there's also resurrection. Amen? This is where we have this promise of resurrection at the end of, the, uh, of days, but this is where we see the resurrection of God in our lives. And that's the ultimate goal. It's to see God move in our lives. We want to see that. The third thing we find in the Gospel of Mark is follow me. Follow me, he says. We're all following something. No one here is not following anything. No one can say, well, you know what? I do. I, I, I don't follow anything. We're all following something. We're all influenced. You're influenced by the stream of media that you listen you're influenced by your upbringing. You're, influences by all, you're influenced by all the voices that is being heard. Like, we're influenced. And we're all following something. And the thing is, we need to come to a decision in life and say, will I follow Jesus? Will I follow Jesus? Will I live a life that honors the Father? Will I follow Jesus where I hear what the Father say and I'll do what the Father does? Will I have a life that says, God, I, I came to serve and not to be served? And this is the challenge that we have as we face the future. Listen, God has a future for the church. And it's based on God's grace and the invitation and the work of the Holy Spirit. But it's also based on my response to follow Jesus. And Jesus was very bold. He says, if you want to follow me, what you need is you need to surrender. you got to take up your cross daily. And what you need to do is to follow me. It's, it's to live beyond myself, right? And so I want to see that in my life. And, and I want to see that in your lives. That my eyes is captivated by the author and the perfecter of my faith. Amen? Is Jesus the, the author and the perfecter of your faith? Yeah? It, he is. So what am I called to do? I'm called to keep my eyes on him, right? I've got, I can't lose sight. I can't look to the right and to the left. I've got to keep my eyes on him. And I'm going to finish with this thought or this text. If you have your Bible, or if you have your phone, I should say, or maybe you do have your Bible, turn to John chapter 12, 24. John 12, 24. I want you to turn to it. I want you to see it. I'm going to read it from the NLT. John chapter 12, verse 24. That would be amazing if you could turn. I'm almost done. How many of you, you're enjoying a, a suntan at the same time? Yeah? All right. So that's the pinnacle or the, the reason why. This is what I want you to catch, okay? From my heart to yours, all of you watching online, I, I want you to catch this. I want you to realize what happens when you deny yourself. I want you to understand what happens when you carry your cross and you choose to live for him daily. I want you to see what happens when you follow him. 
And we see in this amazing text, I think it's mind-blowing. It's, it's amazing. In John 12, verse 24, it says, I tell you the truth. Unless the kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels. A plentiful harvest of new lives. When I read this in, in relation to this message, I was just rock. Actually, I left my office. I was working on it. I left my office and I needed to talk with staff. I was so pumped with this verse. Because it says that if I choose to die and go in the dark like a seed, and I choose to give myself to Christ, there's going to be multiplication. You see the beauty of this? Jesus was talking about himself here. He was talking, he was giving an illustration of what he was about to do, that he was going to be in the ground, he was going to die, but because of his obedience and because of his surrender to the will of the Father, here we are today, many kernels, many seeds. So when I leave, when I live for myself, the only thing I get is myself. Listen. When you live for yourself, you only get yourself. But when you live for God, and you surrender to God, and you say, God, here I am, there's multiplication. You see? In your kids, in your grandkids, in your church, in your workplace, in this world. So the key for the church, the key for the church, it's to surrender. To say, God, here I am. I want to live for you. I belong to you. I don't want to live for myself. I commit my life to you. And when that happens, things changes. The world is changed because of my surrender. But the seed needs to die. You want to have a healthy marriage? You got to die. You want to have a healthy church? Sorry for yelling. Sorry for yelling. You got to die. You have to. That's the way. That's the way that God has chosen. So we can live independently and we can have Christianity like a, something that you hang on your Christmas tree, like an ornament. ornament. Christi Christianity is an ornament on my tree. Or you can treat Christianity as like jumping or starting to be part of a baseball league. I'm part of a baseball league. Christianity is not an ornament that you put on your tree. Christianity is not like joining a baseball league. Christianity is about surrendering your life and meeting Jesus and see him transform you and him arising in you and you stepping in your calling. I believe that if all of us this morning would surrender to him, it would be unreal what this world would experience. We would all go where God has planted us tomorrow. And we would say, God, here I am. Use me. What do you want to say? What do you want to do? What are you up to? I belong to you. It's not about me. It's not about my rights. It's about your will. This world would be rocked. Would you agree? This world would never be the same. It would never be the same if I live a life surrendered. It will never be the same. So God is calling you this morning. Do you want to surrender? Do you, someone says no. Yeah, I, I want to surrender. Because it opens up the seeds. It opens up the path for God to multiply. If I read to you this verse again, it's so amazing. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But if death will produce many new kernels, a plenty harvest of new lives, and that's what I pray, that I would go beyond my fears, go beyond my hurts, my past, my desire, my frustrations, my disappointments, my mistakes, my guilt. And I would say, God, I lay my life at your feet. I remember, I'm going to close up with this. I, I remember in 05, 
when God called me and Michelin and the family, my family to come here. I remember I was in 07, and I didn't know if I was going to stay or not because it was very difficult. And I remember making a, f a funeral service at the cemetery. And I did the funeral service, and, and as I'm in the funeral, not the funeral, but the cemetery, I hear this, this small whisper in my heart, Claude, are you willing to have a tombstone here? I was a little shocked. God, what do you mean? Are you willing to die here? And I went home and I had to make a decision. Am I going to die? Like, what really God us as a family is, is you guys. You're so beautiful. Like, this people is so amazing. I'm a French Mennonite now. You know? You're so amazing. But I know in my journey then, my need was to die and say, God, not my will, your will be done. I'll give you, I'll be vulnerable to you this morning. A month ago, I get this dream. And sometimes we get pizza dreams, right? And you say, what was that? It's a pizza dream. But that night, I don't think it was a pizza dream. Like, the problem with me is sometimes I have a problem to hear his voice, so he has to get my attention during the night. So I'm having this dream of a, of a young adult coming and see me. And the young adult was someone from our church. I, he's probably here today. And he says, Pastor, I've got this friend that is demon, demonically, um, under the influence of demonic powers. Can you pray for me? Can you pr come and pray for him? So I say, yeah, I'll go and, and pray for him. So I go there. I, this guy was taller than, than is the one, the friend that invited me to go and pray for him. So, so in, my, in my dream, okay, remember this, it's a dream. So in the dream, I go before him. I lay hands on his shoulder and, and I take authority for him to be freed. And he backed up, like significantly, significantly. But he looked at me in the face and says, is that all you got? Is that all you got? Like I woke up and I was saying, God, is that a pizza dream? Or is it you speaking to me? And I realized that God was speaking to me, saying, Claude, it's not a, because of your position that you will have an impact in this world or in your church. It's not based on your past experiences that God, that I will move through you. It's based on your surrender right now. If you choose to surrender and live this life of surrender, I will flow through you and move through you. And it really rocked me because I realized, God, I want you to do more. And I want to surrender. My challenge for you this morning, if you are young, if you are a teenager or a young adult, or if you are in the prime of life, or like it was said yesterday, is that you have a problem to walk, you have bad knees. And maybe you're going through health issues that you would say, God, I surrender to you. Have your way in my life. And I believe he's going to step in and move in you this morning. To choose the cross instead of the crown, we'll see God work in a mighty way. To deny yourself and, and to carry your cross. What you'll see, you'll see Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. God will take care of you. And if you surrender to Christ, what's going to happen is that he's going to be active in your life. He's not, going to be, he's, he's not going to be dormant. God doesn't want to be dormant in us. And also, we know what's going to happen. There's going to be a multiplication of seeds. There's going to be multiplication of you. So... I just pray that God m might meet you and meet me there. So maybe you're here this morning and you're dealing with guilt and you struggle to hear this message. I just want to let you know that God loves you so dearly and he humbled himself to the cross. Do the same. Realize your need of God and turn to him and let him move you. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never really surrendered your life to the Lord. For you, Christianity is convenient. It suits you. And you say, God, it has to change because there's no fruits. 
So I want to surrender to you. I would ask you to stand. Father, we, we stand before you like the tax collector that said, Lord, have mercy. We're beating our chests, acknowledging that we need you, that we long for you, that we want to see your will be done in our lives, that you are real and you want to be real in our lives. And for those that are here this morning, Lord, that maybe they walked away from the faith or maybe they're lukewarm in their faith, Maybe they're disillusioned with church. Maybe watching online and you're disillusioned with church. Surrender to Jesus. Remember that Jesus loves you so much and he has a plan for you. But for you to tap into what he has in store, you need to do that exchange. You got to surrender your life. It's a trade-off. It's not an add-on. It's a trade-off. So in your own words this morning, what are you called to surrender? First of all, surrender your life under your mustache, your beard, or under your breath. And say, God, I surrender you my life. I want to be this, this seed that goes into the ground and that produces a harvest. Father, I pray this for the EMMC. I pray this for every churches represented here and watching online. I pray for multiplication. I just pray that you would help us by your Holy Spirit to live a life that is surrendered to you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much for coming. And I should say, thank you so much for staying, right? So uh, take your time to fellowship, to connect with people. And I believe you got to make your way in the back, right? There you go. And so lunch is happening behind, behind us. So blessings on you. Woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you.